You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today I have a brand new face for Greater Brockton. I have Deborah Snow from The Haven. Yes. Welcome. Nice Thank to you. see you. Nice to be here. Thanks for coming in the studio. Um, good news for Brockton. Okay, Brockton has a large homeless population, and you hear a lot of negativity, unfortunately, mm -hmm. about it. Um, I have a soft spot because my dad when he retired, ran the Main Spring House mm -hmm. for 18 months. A Main Spring House is our neighbor. We're right at 1 North Main Street. They're at Main and Spring. That's right. why, hence, it's Main Spring, Father Bill's. <laughs> it's across the street. But Father Bill serves people at night for the most part. You go there, you have your dinner, you sleep there, and then have a nice day. So right. during the day, there's really no place for people that are struggling and just to remind everybody, everybody can be one check, paycheck away Correct. from being homeless or two or foreclosure or divorce or sickness or whatever. And you guys formed a group to try to make that not happen, to, to make a, have right. a place for people to go, to have a haven, no pun intended, right on Pleasant Street. Right. Okay. Um, there's a fire station. There's a Haitian church right there. Um, right in between is this little small building, and you guys are in it. Yes, we are. So what are you planning to do? I, I know you're opening soon, coming up in November. Right. Tell me. So our planned date to open is November 13th, so just about two weeks away, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, the design of our location is to be a haven, to be a safe place for people who are either homeless or struggling or marginalized or you know, shut in because of their circumstances and the people that are around them and don't feel safe out on the street, have no place to go and be um, productive during the daytime hours. So it is open to anyone from the community who chooses to come in. The design of it is to be, again, safe place, a warm place out of the elements, but a place to um, rediscover the gifts that God has given them, mm -hmm. rediscover who they were at one time. So there's an awful lot of people that are out and struggling who are phenomenal writers or artists or musicians, but don't have access to the resources that they need to put those things into action, to be productive with their, with their gifts. Or they've forgotten what their gifts are because of the circumstances that they've been living in and how society has sort of beaten it out of them. Mm -hmm. So this is a place where they can come and have access to those resources to find encouragement to relationship build, to be loved, and to be safe. So working with the mayor's office and working with city resources, we will be having um, seminars and sessions where we would have resources like uh, Social Security that would come in and on a smaller scale be able to afford one-to-one -one work with filling out paperwork, having DTA come in and help them fill out housing forms, so that they're not standing in a line being handed a packet of papers and told to go and do what you can with it and then bring it back in a month, but to have actual mentoring, to sit down with them right. and fill it out correctly the first time and not have all that wasted time. And the, the facility is going to have one thing that's very much needed in the downtown area, bathrooms. Bathrooms. Okay, because there are no public bathrooms Correct. anymore in downtown Brockton. They right. used to be at City Hall. Uh, even City Hall itself, you've got to get the key from the mayor's office right. to go to the bathroom. That would deter people. Um, a lot of the uh, Dunkin' Donuts and places like that, they're locked. And right. unless you're a customer, and unless you're buying a product, you're not using the bathroom anymore. So then you're left with no alternative if you don't have right. a place to go. Um, I know there are a lot of charitable people in downtown Brockton. There's, there's a church across the street from us. They do clothing drives. Mm -hmm. I know people have fed folks in, in the park. The whole park became a big controversy and it was all fenced off. It's open again, but it, it has a bad rap to it. Right. So you're trying to steer people away from just hanging out in the street, so to speak. Correct. What's the capacity? It's a small building and I know this is just the beginning. You told me you, you folks have been working on this for a long time. Three years. We've been okay. putting this into action for three years. Um, the capacity of the building yeah. is 87 to 100 people. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think that there's potential for us to outgrow that building, which mm -hmm. would be a wonderful thing if we can actually have a space big enough to house anybody and everybody all at one time. Um, but 87 people is, is what the city has granted us. Mm -hmm. um, so 
how, how quickly it will fill in the morning and how long people will stay, we, have, we don't know. At this point, that's an unknown. Right. Um, we do respect that Father Bill's runs a soup kitchen there, and so we are not serving meals. Um, we will have breakfast foods available, coffee and snacks, but we respect the fact that they already have a functioning soup kitchen, so we will be open during the lunchtime hours, but we will definitely continue to encourage them to go and have lunch at Father Bill's yeah. and then come back. And some of the churches in the area do, there's, there's food pantries, right, there's, exactly. there's lunches. I mean, the, the churches have all been welcoming right. to you know the, the homeless population. Um, so you're a, a nonprofit, yes. a 501c3, mm -hmm. so you can take donations from people that yes. are like-minded to, to help. That would okay. be wonderful. <laughs> um, we're gonna put up all your information, all your mm -hmm. contact information up on the screen, right, how to right. get in touch with you. But you're basically looking for people to come and help. You're looking for volunteers. Right. Okay. So our open days are Mondays and Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we've had to limit it to those two days is because we don't have enough staff to be open and be safe and cover all the needs that we have. So we are open Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 to 4. Mm -hmm. um, and we will have two, two volunteer shifts per day. So 7.45, or sorry, 8.45 yeah. to noon, and then noon to 4.15 would be the two volunteer shifts. Mm -hmm. um, and the volunteers would be involved in all kinds of things. They'll be involved with reception and getting them all checked in and having their things locked up in the lockers, um, sitting down and having conversations with them and doing artwork together and um, helping them identify what programs we're offering that they might need and how to get them connected with the right resources on the right days of the week. So the volunteers are going to be active. They're not going to just be there to um, chaperone, but they're, you know, we're hoping to have them be actively involved in the community that we're serving. Now, there are a lot of different volunteer programs. Students have to do community service work. Mm -hmm. I know Brockton Public Schools does that. I know Massasoit Community College where I teach does that. Right. Stonehill. Are, are you trying to get those groups yes. involved as well, or are they going to be involved? Do you know? We're hoping. We've, okay. We're reaching out to the universities that are in the area. Um, we do have an age limit. We want the volunteers to be 18 years or older. Okay. So that does limit the high school age a little bit. Um, and because of our hours, there's a lot of school time overlap, which sure. makes it complicated. But um, we are in the process of reaching out. We haven't gotten very far yet. There's a lot of paperwork that needs to get taken care of for that, but yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and funding i mean since you're a nonprofit, you can raise money for donations right is there any coordination of state federal city funds uh, budgets seem to be dwindling federally statewide and right. even in the city okay the city's had a lot of budget struggles we've had cuts with the schools things like that do you, do you are you able to access any money from any of those sources we or? are not asking for money from any of the um, government um, entities yet. Okay. We haven't gotten that far. Um, so right now, we once we start getting people in the door and can start collecting some data, we'll be pursuing grants. Okay. That hasn't started yet. So really our fundraising is word of mouth to the people that we know as a board, the people that we know. Um, we will be pursuing speaking at churches and you know public opportunities as they arise. We'll, 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 we'll give you some trying. advice on who to talk to. That would okay? be wonderful, yeah. <laughs> so I got the one-minute cue. We're done. I don't know if you want to do a real quick appeal, like 30 seconds or less. Look at the camera. If you don't, you're good. So what else, maybe what, hang on, Brockton Haven at Gmail. I will say, if, yeah. you, if it, I want to put that at least, the Brockton Haven at Gmail is the address to go to to get information about the application. Okay, so. and we're going to follow you. We'll come and do, when you do the opening after a while, we'll do a little feature. And that we'll help you publicize it. Okay. So thanks for coming on. Thank you. You're welcome. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.